Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. In this lecture will be starting with strings, arrays, booleans, characters and numbers. These are the basic types that Kotlin supports. So let's go ahead and explore each one of them starting with strings. So here I have a function called main and it is basically having one parameter called arguments which is of type array of strings. Here inside that function I've created a variable val s for string which is containing this hello world. Now so strings are immutable and elements of a string are basically characters that can be accessed by the indexing operations. So you can say that a string is basically an array of characters and if I have to loop through them which we will be exploring when we'll be covering loops in Kotlin and uh, talking about strings we must know about string literals here in kotlin we have two types of string literals scaped strings that may have escaped characters in them and raw strings that can contain new lines and some arbitrary text so if i have to make this as a as an escaped literal string literal i can say backslash n and scaping as you can see is done with a backslash and if you are talking about raw string so there we make use of triple quotes so I can have another variable over here like val t equals triple quote and then I can say line 1 line 2 and then close it with triple quotes so that's the other string literal and you can see the output over here as well line 1 line 2 okay now let's talk about string templates so whenever you have some expressions or variables that you want to evaluate along with a string of message you can make use of string templates so strings may contain template expressions which are basically pieces of code that are evaluated and the results are then concatenated into the string. So I can say in this way we have let's say a variable i equals 8 and here's another one let's call it as result equal to i equals dollar i and let's close this so now if i go ahead and print this one the expression that we have stored over here in a result variable will be i equals 8 there we have it similarly we can also have arbitrary expressions in curly braces as well so another example of a string template would be finding the length of a given string so we already have this s over here which says hello world so what I'll do is I'll be using another variable and let's call it as len equal to dollar s so this is the variable which I'm referring to when I'm saying dollar s and here dot length is inside the curly brackets I'll say s dot length and if I just go ahead and print this you can see it says hello world then a line break is there because we have this escape character backslash n and dot length is 12 so the new line character is also counted and there we have it string templates we'll be continuing this lecture and in the next one we'll be covering arrays in kotlin in this lecture we'll be exploring packages and imports so any source file that we have can start with a package declaration now a package basically consists of classes and functions and some of the packages that are available by default in every kotlin file are kotlin kotlin annotation 
collections, comparisons, IO, ranges, sequences, and text. So these are the default imports you can say. And based on the environment that we are targeting, for instance, if we are targeting Java Virtual Machine, then we have java.lang and kotlin.jvm packages available. So if we have to import, so if we have to include a package, we can just say package foo.bar. So for instance, over here, you can see that we had this package, scrubakery.demo. Now, this is the package for this particular file. So the main file that we have, so the main function that we have is now inside this package. So that's what package basically wraps up everything. That's classes and functions, everything. So if I have to say this main function, it is skillbakery.demo.main. That way we can access this function. Now coming on to imports as we have over here, imports java.util. So when we say import java.util or for instance, we say foo.bar. So bar will now be accessible without any qualification. Similarly, if you just want to include everything that the foo package has to offer, we can simply say import foo.star. So everything in foo becomes accessible. Now, if there is a name clash, so let's say two packages are there with same name. In that case, you can just name one as an alias. For instance, if we have bar classes in foo.bar and bar.bar, in that case, we can just say bar.bar as bbar. So bbar will now point to bar.bar. That way you can resolve these conflicts. Apart from including classes, we can also include or import top level functions using the import keyword and properties as well as enum constants. So there was packages and imports. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.